Hi everyone, I'm Serge Kekidembe from Trading Wall Street TV and thanks for joining me for this new episode of Time to Trade the Markets, the weekly reports. We can analyze the markets using price action and technical analysis, but first let's begin with some news, macroeconomics data and more stuffs. Okay, so now here on the uh, economic calendar, what do we have for this week on Monday? Uh, June the uh, 26th, we have in Germany, we have the IFO business climate from uh, June. And then back in the US, we have the doable goods orders month over month for May. And on the earnings side, what do we have? We have uh, on June the 28th, we have uh, investors uh, real estate. And later that day, we're going to have Monsanto publishing earnings and on June the uh, 29th we're gonna have uh, Constellation Brands, Nike and Walgreens Boots Alliance. Okay now let's move on. I'm gonna have a look at some uh, news feeds and uh, more stuff you know. Uh, first of all here on the uh, businessinsider.com we are here looking at Market Insider. We have a news uh, here uh, from Citibank. The first thing you should do when you start at Wall Street, uh, at a Wall Street bank. Then what do we have? We have stocks go nowhere. Here's what you need to know. I'm going to have a look at that when we're going to look at the, uh, at the charts later on. Here, a news about Apple and the uh, Dr. Dre show. So let's move on. We have Google. Ah, this one is uh, pretty interesting. Here you have Google is going to stop reading the mail in your Gmail inbox to target ads to you. Ah, pretty interesting. So uh, now you know that Google's going to stop reading your email, so uh, it's good. Now, Credit Suisse. It's not about Credit Suisse, but Credit Suisse is talking about Amazon. Amazon Prime World Warp is the perfect service for taking over fashion retail. So for those of you who are trading Amazon, there you go. Here, Tesla. What's happening with Tesla? Tesla loses a veteran hardware engineer during a critical time for its autopilot program. So we're going to see how it's going to affect the uh, autopilot stuff with the, uh, with the Tesla cars. Next, ah, here on the energy side, we are still, uh, these are still news from businessinsider.com. And here, what to expect with oil. There are several red flags in the oil markets right now. And then here, oil creeps up from 10 month low down nearly 4% on week. And here, Gulf states issued 13 demands to Qatar and set a deadline of 10 days to comply. You see, uh, the conflict over there in the Middle East is, is still going on. So it's going to have uh, much impact, you know, on, uh, on oil prices. Let's move on. Here on the currency side, Forex speculators boost net long US dollars and euro longs fall. We're going to have a look at that. We're going to uh, look at the DXY charts later on. Okay. Here, Ethereum. John McAfee's latest gambit is mining Ethereum, the, the, the cryptocurrency that's up nearly 4,000% this year. Yeah, Ethereum had a huge, huge, huge uh, boost, a huge move. To the upside so uh, later on also we're gonna have a look at the ethereum chart and here the ecb took a big step towards uh, resting control of london's near 900 billion euro clearing business so that's for those of you who are trading the uh, euro dollar currency pair so there's a news from the ecb here let's move on more mm, here we have a news from south africa and this news, uh, that particular news, is going to impact on the rand. That's the currency from South. That's the South African currency, and South African Parliament opposes calls to change central bank mandates. And here, what do we have? Norway, you know, the cor the corona from Norway. Norway's 960 billion wealth funds should be split from central bank reform proposal. And over here, a committee of the world's biggest banks choose a new alternative to the scandal-ridden LIBOR rates. The LIBOR is the London Interbank 
overnight rate. So for those of you who are trading the, uh, the pound and stuff like that, so here we have a particular news about that. Here, more news on Business Insider and MarketInsider.com. A 20-year-old with $181,000 in the bank explains a simple calculation that keeps him from overspending. Here, the Wall Street Dad Bro is having an existential crisis. Here, the next big stock market shift could come from an unexpected source. And here on Market Watch, we're going to have a look at uh, the news over here. Uh, first one, is this the simple reason stock picking on Wall Street is dying? So, and here, what Russell Index rebalancing means for the stock markets and what causes the Ethereum flash crash. Yeah, we saw that earlier um, this week. So as I said, we're going to have a look at the Ethereum uh, charts later. Here, Bitcoin makes up nearly half of the 100 billion cryptocurrency market cap. What's the rest? Okay. So also we're going to have a look at the Bitcoin charts. And here, chart shows how terrible Wall Street economists are at forecasting bond yields. I'm going to have a look at the T-bond and the T-notes. And here, how we have, what do we have over here? How big is Bitcoin, really? This chart puts it all in perspective. You know, more news about cryptocurrencies. You know, there's a few one. And here, a teenage Bitcoin millionaire can see the cryptocurrencies value shooting as high as $1 million per coin. So, as you can see, a lot of... Uh, news about cryptocurrency you know that's trending right now so we're gonna have a look at uh, cryptos later on so now here we have a the s p 500 sectors map and what we can see over here we can see that in the uh, technology sector google facebook and microsoft oracle and adobe uh, remember that adobe uh, published earnings earlier uh, last week and what do we have so Overall, the technology sector is doing fine. Services, mm, you know, 50-50, you know, uh, it's good for Amazon, you know, uh, with the Amazon was on the news with the uh, bid for uh, Whole Foods and the m and uh, Basic materials, you know, as you can see, it's in red uh, due to the fact uh, of lower oil prices. Here, healthcare, what do we know about healthcare? You know that uh, President Trump uh, is back again on the Obamacare issue. I issue. Here, utilities, bad week for utilities, industrial goods, mm, bad week for industrial, industrial goods, consumer goods, mm, good week for Apple, but mm, I see that it's, mm, it's a bad week. And financial, you can see bad week from financial, except for the credit services, Visa, MasterCard, American Express, and PayPal. And on the money center banks uh, industry, uh, only uh, JP Morgan, uh at a good week so now let's go to the etfs and the etfs and here as you can see the stock markets uh pretty good the sectors healthcare good energy low bad week for energy bad week for uh, financials mm, flat week for real estate good week for technology utilities consumer uh, the consumers and industrial goods and basic materials all in red. Over here, the U.S. large cap, you know, um, you have the U.S. large cap over here, you have the mid cap in red, U.S. small cap in green, the volatility index, you have the XIV in red and the VIX in, no, XIV in green, uh, bullish week for the XIV and for the VIX, uh, that was, a, the VIX is still uh, lower. We're gonna see, we're gonna see that on the charts later. And over here, fixed income, and we have a green week, a bullish week for the uh, for U.S. government debt. Over here, global the miners in green, <coughs> and commodities in red. Okay, now let's move on. In here we have the charts. First of all, this is the Dow Jones Industrial Average weekly chart. We have a flat week. You can see a doji over here. We reach the uh, 21, uh, 21,500 points. And now what can we expect for next week? We are still above the four weeks moving average. And 
if this uh, bearish sentiment continues and we see a close below the four weeks moving average we're gonna maybe we can go lower you see here the we, we are in a uptrend channel uh, uh, channel over here and maybe we can come back over here at support level and then bounce back and go and go back to the resistance over here at 2150 uh, 21,500 uh, over here so expect more uh, move to the uh, range movements over here that's why uh, that's what I'm expecting for next week now let's have a look at the diamonds the ETF the Dow Jones ETF you see over here what do we have a, a rejection we rejected uh, higher prices and we have a close below the uh, $214 and we are still above the four weeks moving average and for next week I'm expecting um, the diamonds to go sideways and maybe start uh, starting to see some uh, movement to the downside but um, what I'm expecting is a flat week and if I see a close below the four weeks uh, moving average over here, maybe I said maybe it's gonna have it's gonna trigger more uh, more downfall, you know, more uh, and it's gonna attract more sellers. So let's move on now. Uh, we have over here the Nasdaq Composite. We see the resistance over here at uh, six thousand three hundred points bullish week over here and now we are we have a close you can see here that's the for the uh, 50 percent of these uh, bearish uh, candlestick over here and now i'm expecting a continuation if uh, if i if we have a continuation to this uh, bullish uh, candlestick maybe we can go higher and go back to the uh, 6300 points if not we're gonna have more sideways movements. It's a kind of uh, inside week uh, uh, candle type of pattern over here. You see, and also you can see uh, we are forming well, was forming a former uh, triangle over here. But now, if we break above this uh, resistance, so we can go back to the six thousand and three hundred points and maybe go higher towards the uh, six thousand three hundred and fifty points over here okay now let's move on over here now we have the nasdaq 100 and in the short term what i see in the short term exactly the same thing as we see on the uh, nasdaq composite charts but over here you can see over here we are uh, closer to the 50 percent you know of these of the uh, uh bearish candlestick over here and i'm expecting a continuation of that bullish movement over here you see we have a gap down over here a doji gap up above the uh, eight week moving average here a close above the four week moving average and now I'm expecting a continuation you know and a continuation and we can climb higher first reach the uh, 58 uh, close to the uh, 5900 points and then move on to the channel of resistance over here at uh, close to the 6000 points okay so now let's move on over here we have the qqq the etf nasdaq etf same thing you know over here see the 50 percent of the uh, bearish candlestick over here we have a close just below that level over here you see a close above the four week moving, av moving average and we are in a, um, a bullish movement over here you know one week you see gap down the doji gap up boom close above the four weeks uh, moving average close to the 50 percent of these uh, bearish uh, candlestick and now i'm expecting uh, more moves towards the upsides and we can climb and go back to the uh, 144 144 uh, dollars over here okay so now let's move on the s p 500 over here you see the uh, bullish channel you know resistance supports resistance and now we are here we stick to the uh, channels uh, resistance for one two three four weeks in a row so now we have over here we have a, 
a doji type of candle uh, so as you can see we are in a um, uh, sideways movement over here in, inside with candle not really but yes over here we had a triangle break up gap up but still this can candlestick is a bearish candlestick so now i'm expecting more moves towards the downside and a close below the four weeks moving average it's going to be a signal and maybe a trigger for a uh, possible downfall over here maybe we're going to go down and reach the eight moving average remember we have a gap over here and maybe we can come back over here you know the channel supports we test that resistance now supports bounce over here and then boom go back higher let's move on over here we have the SPY the ETF the spiders sideways movement you know bearish week for one two three bearish week inside week candle type of uh, pattern over here we have the resistance at uh, 245 and here a uh, support at the uh, eight week moving average at uh, 241.50 241.75 and what I'm expecting, as I said, for the S&P 500, more moves towards the downside here, towards the uh, channel's uh, support, and then bounce back and go back higher, okay? Here you have your uh, short-term channel, you know, resistance, 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 support, resistance, support over here, and that's it. Okay, hey, by the way, uh, we have closed below the four weeks moving average here in blue, you know, sky blue over here. This one and one okay there you go now let's move on now we have on the left side of the screen that's uh, the VIX and over here you have the uh, over here that's the uh, X uh, XIV okay now first of all let's have a look at the VIX for the VIX what are we seeing here for the VIX the VIX we're seeing a we're still lower we're around the uh, 10 points over here still below the four weeks moving average and the eight week uh, moving average but you can see huge spikes over here huge shadows you know at the shadows reaches towards the 21 26 and 13 moving average over here we have the 52 moving average so we can see we are uh, trading in range moving in the range sideways uh, in the sideways uh, movement between a supports here at the uh, 52 weeks moving average at 1250 and uh, 950 okay and for the xiv we are still bullish we see the resistance over here first resistance boom break over here sideways movement you know and here sideways movement inside with candle boom break of the resistance over the 82.50 and now we are uh, we are at uh, 85.20 and if we if it remain that way if thing remain uh, that way we can go higher towards 90 okay so now let's move on what do we have over here we have the Russell 2000 on the left and here we have the IWM the ETF Russell 2000 ETF over here you can see a triangle a descendant triangle over here inside week candle type of pattern over here we are still bullish rejection of the eight week moving average over here close above the four weeks moving uh, four week moving average but we are still in an inside week moving average from one two weeks you know third week in a inside, inside week uh, moving uh, pattern so what we uh, need and uh, what can we expect for next week next week a maybe a bullish movement above the uh, 1420 towards the 1440 and on the downside if you go lower we're gonna look for the uh, 1400s 1400s over here you see here resistance and now support at the 1400s and see that's the region of the eight week uh, moving average over here and for the IWM you see here the triangle and same thing if we break up we're gonna go towards the resistance over here at 142.50 uh, and if we break lower see here we are, we are at the uh, four, four weeks moving average and if we go lower 
we're gonna go towards the 100, uh, 139, 139 maybe and 138.50 over here to the downside. So we are still in a inside week um, type of a pattern over here. Okay, so now let's move on. Now we're gonna look at uh, the government bonds. First of all, here on the left side, we have the T notes, 10 year treasury notes. And over here, we have the 10 year yield. The treasury notes, you see treasury note futures. We are bullish, bullish channel over here. You see the uh, supports, resistance, supports, now resistance, rejection at the resistance. At resistance, we have the 52 moving uh, average and the uh, 104 moving average close to the 128 uh, dollar mark and over here we have a short-term resistance at 127.50 120 yeah 127.50 uh, bearish week still below that moving average and here in green that's the 200 208 moving average and I'm expecting a, I'm still bullish, you know, on the uh, 10 year note future. And that's what I see, you know, when we take a look at the, uh, the pattern. So now what we need, uh, we need a, uh, we need a movement and the close be above 127 and 127, 25, and then we can go higher. If not, if, there's a continuation to that uh, to that uh, bearish candlestick over here. We're gonna go in direction of the eight week moving average over here, you know, that and that's the uh, 126, 25 price range over here. See here, resistance, and now that's the point. Okay, and here, as you can see, the higher the uh, notes price, the lower the bond yield and now the bond is yielding lower going lower lower and lower you know since that particular point over here the 2.3 percent and then we are in a free fall and over here we have the 52 week moving average close to the uh, two percent uh, yield for the uh, 10 year treasury notes so now let's move on here we have the t bonds futures on the left we have the uh, we have the the bond price and here on the right side of the screen we have the uh, you have the yield still in a bullish channel you see supports resistance supports resistance and over here we are in a inside weak candle pattern a close just below 157 and above the four weeks moving average look at the spreads between the four week moving average and the eight week moving average that's close to two dollars and uh, two dollars and fifty cents over here so that's huge uh, a lot of volatility so if there is a rejection of that particular resistance over here the 157 and we see a following a follow-up to these to the uh, bearish candlestick we can go lower in direction of the 155 and 154.50 and as you can see same thing as the t note 10 year note higher bond price lower uh, lower yield over here you see yield is trending down already below the 200 no, already below the 104 moving average and this one is the 52 week moving average if you see a convergence, you see here, you can see a, a conversion is near between the four week moving average, um, one or four moving average, and 52 moving average over here. So we're gonna go lower with the yields towards the uh, two point, uh, towards the uh, two point two point six percent. Okay. So now let's continue. What do we have next? And next over here, what do we have here? We have the US dollar index, the DXY. And as we can see here, the downtrend channel over here. 
and now we are at a support you can see over here four week moving average and the 104 moving average over here we have the 52 moving average and we are moving and trading to uh, moving uh, sideways over here you know inside we candle you know since that particular bar over here that particular candlestick we are still moving sideways but first of all we have to notice we have a close over here at the four week moving average we are still above the four weeks moving average we have rejected the uh, 96 uh, 50 point mark and now we are above the four week moving average we are between four week moving average and the eight moving average and a convergence over here between the eight week moving average and the 52 moving average you see a rejection over here so uh, that explains the uh, sideways movement over here so what i'm expecting for next week uh, we're gonna try to come back over here remember what we saw in the uh, news in the article uh, earlier when i was talking about uh, the speculators are speculators are long the uh, US dollar and short the euro so uh, that's a, a, a we have a great probability of uh, see an uptrend in the short term you know maybe from 97.50 towards 98 or maybe in 98.50 see over here we have a convergence between the uh, 13 moving average and the 52 moving average over here you see over here we have a huge spread and that's volatility so we can have a pretty good move you know over here okay so now let's move on what do we have now we have uh, we're gonna have a look at uh, commodities and now we have oil remember in the news we saw a lot of news concerning uh, oil in the Middle East, uh, uh, pri uh, crude prices, and that's it, you know. One, two, three, four, five, five weeks. We're going down for five weeks, you know, still we are below all of the moving average. That's your, that's your 52, no, uh, 104 week moving average, four weeks moving average, eight weeks, 52 weeks, 13 weeks. 21 weeks and 26 weeks okay and here we have the a, uh, support over here at 46 dollars a barrel and over here we are at uh, 43 dollars a barrel you know as you can see uh, we visit this price zone now it's the third time a rejection over here and if we go below you see we have another support over here at 40 dollars a barrel so maybe we are we are going that way so we have to expect more move to the downside for in oil prices let's move on here we have the gold futures you can see a doji over here indecision candle and we are at the uh, short term uptrend channel you see started over here with the uh, supports resistance support resistance support support and down here we have a rejection for the second time for the third time a rejection of the uh, 1300s and now we are going lower but this week we can see uh, we can clearly see an indecision and we are just above the uh, 21 week moving average and below the four week moving average, 13 week moving average and eight week moving average. So now we need a direction. You know, if we reject lower prices, since we are at the channel's uh, support, uh, maybe we can move higher. If we have a close above uh, this particular region over here, and it's gonna be like the 1270 yeah below uh, above the 1270 a close with a bullish I said and I repeat a close with a bullish candlestick and then boom we can go higher coming back to the first of all here the 1285 uh, and then 1295 1300 and then move lower uh, move higher towards the channel's resistance over here at 12.30 uh, no, at 13.30 excuse me, 13.30 for gold and this is the ETF, the gold ETF, the GLD uh, same thing, exactly, but over here we, we already see a bullish uh, type of uh, candle over here, you see 
we see it on the uh, 208 moving average above the uh, we have a uh, close below uh, above the uh, 21 week moving average and the 26 moving average here we have the uh, 104 moving average and the 52 is over here and four week moving average over here so I'm expecting more move towards the upside over here and we are going back to the resistance of uh, 122 and 123 dollars over here okay let's move on silver in a down trend channel you see over here we have the uh, channels support channels resistance channels support channels resistance and now boom we'll go in we are going lower over here towards maybe 1550 but take a look over here we have a convergence not a convergence but that's the you see that particular moving average over here that's your uh, support and that's your uh, 104 104 moving average here and i'm expecting maybe if that's a rejection of lower prices you see here the pointer but that's a bearish pointer so maybe next week we're gonna have we're gonna open in this area in this region the region of between uh, 1670 and 1680 and we're gonna go sideways a little bit during the, the week and then boom we can go lower or we can climb higher since we are at the uh, channels resistance and a break above that particular level over here uh, the 171720 maybe we can climb higher and go higher towards the uh, 1770 okay 1770 okay over, over here okay let's continue and now we are this is the slv uh silver etf same thing downtrend channel you you know that's a, a cancellation you know that particular bar over here that candlestick over here cancels the bullish candlestick and that's a, a bearish uh, reversal over here so now you can see the same things here the channels support channels resistance channels support over here channels resistance move to the downside gap down over here we have a bullish doji over here the same thing as the one over here and now maybe we can see you know when these type of things happen that uh, particular pattern you know that good morning pattern over here you know bearish candle indecision and then uh, bullish uh, movement and over here that's the same thing and remember we have a gap down over here but here we have a gap up and all the gap must be filled so maybe we can see a move towards the downsides or a sideways movement to consolidate and accumulate uh, power and then maybe we go we can go higher but take a look we are just here at the middle of the uh, the channel so we can go uh, both ways here we can go up or we can go down so uh, pay close attention you know and now we are gonna have a look at the cryptos first of all Bitcoin versus dollar US dollar over here we see inside week candle uh, inside week candles over here you see mm, that's your next week's uh, candle and we are between the four week moving average here in blue and in gray over here we have the uh, eight week moving average you know acting as a support at uh, 2400 and your resistance will be over here at maybe 2700 so you know it's forming a kind uh, a triangle over here so maybe for this week i'm expecting more moves towards the uh, downside because when i look at this particular bar as the uh, when i look at this candle over here that's a bullish pointer you see over here we have a uh, bullish pointer that's a bearish pointer excuse me bearish bearish pointer over here and you see that goes all the way down towards the eight weeks moving average so maybe over here we can 
is uh, you know is guiding us you know that particular candlestick is showing us the direction the market could go the prices of the bitcoin could go lower and we already here you can see maybe you're gonna have maybe not but in the near future in short term we, we're gonna have like uh, a type of convergence between the four week moving average and the eight week moving average and if it happens you know you're gonna see more moves to more movement to, towards the downside and we're gonna go to the uh, $2,000 mark $2,000 mark over here okay and if not if it decides to pop higher above the four weeks moving average over here 2700 boom and we're gonna go back to the uh, $3,000 okay and here we have ethereum versus the US dollar and since i don't have much we don't have much data on this one for the uh, weekly uh, chart we're gonna have a look we're gonna analyze these you know that's the reason why i put both of the uh, both time frames over here we have a daily chart and over here that's a weekly chart so you see uh we remember the flash crash or crash or whatever you want to call it but uh, it is what it is over here you see huge crack huge crash towards the downside below a hundred dollars it reaches eighty dollars and then boom it came back up but that's a that's what you know that's a as you can see over here reaches uh, 74 74 dollars that's a bearish pointer so now we are in free fall you know as you can see that's close below the four week moving average since but you know that's the only one i have over here so what well, you can see we can expect more moves towards the downside so we have oof, a huge way to go as you can see over here four day moving average eight way uh, eight days moving average 13 days moving average uh, 21 days moving average 26 days moving average and we're already below see over here we have a convergence you see the four days moving average going lower and here we have the 52 days moving average and a hundred and 104 days moving average so you see we have volatility so maybe we can go from 300 to 200 dollars so you have to take a look at that and that's a lot 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 of volatility okay so people thanks for being with me and thanks for watching and hopefully this will help some someone over there and blessings and have a great week and a great trading week and see you guys next week thank you bye